farm. How you going? So today she's a bit of a cold one. Dad's you. She's all iced up. Dad's you. No, he didn't start. What I was saying, frost this time of year, it might start to affect our yield. If if wheat, barley, canola, all that stuff gets frosted at the wrong time, it it actually makes the seeds oh, frost. We're still it's still pretty early just yet, but we we are starting to get to that time. So it's a little little nerve wracking getting frost this time of year. You'll notice I've got a different hat on today. Big thanks to Gason Agriculture. They sent me out a, a merchandise pack after I put up the spreading video. Um, we love their gear. It's good quality Australian made gear, locally made actually, not too far from us. So big thanks to them if you're after anything agriculture related, look up Gason. They might have what you need. If you're watching and you have a hat that you would like to feature in the videos, send me a message. We'll work something out. I'm happy to wear a lot of hats. Pretty good around here. All the crops are, yeah, looking good. Hopefully we'll get some rain soon. But yeah, it, nah, it's it's looking really good. All right, we're on our way out north, out to Honor. The plan for today is to get the lambs in, and then Chris from DMD is going to come and sort them out. We'll draft the heavy ones off the top and the light ones off the bottom. The heavy ones will go to market, or something. Yeah, see what happens. All right, you might remember a few videos ago, we were sowing loosen. Or alfalfa. I've just jumped the fence and having a look, and it is looking fantastic. Bit of forage brassica coming up, but that lucerne is kicking, kicking big goals. It's looking really, really good. Hopefully, we we'll get a little bit more rain, and that'll just make sure it survives. But it is looking fantastic. Got them, got them through this gate. That was a little bit of a challenge, but we got them. Oh, a bit grassy here. Yeah, look at that one. I oh, know he looks like a clover, but I guess he's a loosen. How can you tell between? Lucent and clover. Clover looks bigger. <laughs> there you go, clover looks bigger. <laughs> that one's little, it must be a lucent. Could be a 
give a answer. That one's definitely loosened. You remember in one of my videos last year out here, I said that the, the windmill was was no good. Well, this is our solar panel for our solar pump. And thanks to the boys at May Drill, it's really good. We really like it and it pumps a lot of water. Yep, going, going. Yeah. Yep, yeah. That's our plan. If we can, we'll get half a mob at a time. Okay. Rather than try to handle a whole lot. Righty, eh? Yep. Go down around that way. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. See if we can find about half. Do you want me to go this way? Go that way. Yep. Righty, eh? We have dreams. They were better off dreams. So you can't them. I mean of them in and just waiting for dad Let's see what we do next we've got Chris Barber out here and he's just drafted off all the light ones so right now I'm setting up the gate Get up there. and we're gonna let the light ones out into this pen here they come Better give him a count. and ten I reckon. So if you were wondering I didn't actually count them that fast. Chris counted them. He's a gun counter. I just wanted to make you think I counted them that fast. Just gotta open this gate and let these ones out here. Scales in. Now we've got to weigh the sheep. 
just finished weighing them. Got the extra heavies here, the mediums over there, and then the light ones here. And uh, this here, don't know if you can see that, maybe. That's the breakdown of the of the lambs that we just weighed. All the weights and everything. Which is pretty cool. So we got all the sheep sorted and now we picked out the ones to sell, all these ones. And we're doing some crutching. So pretty much just tidying up the back end. Just makes them look nice for the sale. As you can probably see, Dad's pretty good at this. He's done a fair bit of it. And it shows, because he's pretty quick. <laughs> this thing that we're using is the Draffen, a Draffen sheep handler. How it works, the sheep runs in there, gets squeezed like this. And then Dad will press the pedal, flips it over. The one that's done runs out, and the new one runs in. Easy as that. Dad's decided it's knock-off time. Or well, we both decided. So, we're gonna head home, and we'll see you tomorrow. You're gonna sleep like a baby tonight that we locked in this this paddock last night some of them have gotten out and right now we got some of them back in for these last four and a few lambs proving very difficult yeah not fun because we've got to have the gate open to get the sheep that are in that paddock out the gate. Yeah, tricky. In you go. We got him. We got him. I'd say that and that. Might be where they've got through. So we're back at the yards again and today got a different hat on. Glen Lee Park, Port Alessas. Big shout out to Will, breeding some cracking rams and we really like them. Yesterday we had trouble with the sheep coming up here and then when one would go in, they'd back back around the corner. So today, Dad thought of the idea of bringing out this panel, which has got an anti-backer on it. So they can walk past, and then when they try and go back, it stops them. So we're just tying it on, and we'll see how it goes.
So far our anti-backing device seems to be working pretty good. the time so these ones with the red dots they are the ones that we separated they're going they're the mid mid weight range ones and they'll be going to Coles so if you buy some lamb from Coles it could have come from this farm so Coles are after a specific type of lamb a certain weight range and if you send lambs to them that are too heavy or too small too heavy or too light you, you actually get penalized for it now I, I always thought this was ridiculous but I asked Chris about it and he said it's because they the processing equipment isn't set up for that size lamb they're set up for this this size lamb that they want not those giant ones out there, or those little ones. Popper the gun crutches back on the handpiece today. <laughs> Peeling it off them. So all these other lambs out here that we haven't crutched yet, they'll be going, they'll be going to the sale yard in autumn and they they are restocker lambs most likely they'll go to people buying in lambs to fatten up but they also could go for me too we're just keen to offload some before the big spring lamb flush comes through and before it gets too dry because it's pretty dry out here. I was lost before, but now I'm found. I was blind about the darkness, now I see. Up on the cross with your feet off the ground. It's my sin, so I believe I will be free. You came and you are flying, Dad. <laughs> You want these laid out here? So that's all the Coles ones done. Now we're gonna work on those those ones for the sale yard. We just just pulled up for lunch. I thought I'd just show you one of Dad's marvelous creations. These are our very comfortable chairs. That is a car seat on a base. We've got one too. Old Commodore seat on a base. Fantastic. <laughs> so we're finished with lunch. Dad's going to check some sheep and I'm just scratching away. So let's keep going. All 
All right, so this sheep, it's still got a tail. As you can see there, tail. But it doesn't have an ear tag. So we gotta put one in it because to be able to sell a sheep, it's gotta have an ear tag. So here we go. There we go, purple for you. Now these ear tags, they've got, you know, you might be able to see in there, not really. Anyway, inside here, there's like a little microchip thing, similar to what your dog has, like your pet dog, um, and that that's in the ear tag so that the sheep are traceable. So when these sheep get killed, when they go to Coles or Woolworths or wherever they go, they, in the abattoir, they can actually trace it back to this farm. So that's a, a big advance that I've made in the meat industry just recently. The last one. Here we go. 226. It's not bad. So, we started at nine o'clock today. And we finished at 2.30. And we did 480. In that time, we had an hour and a half off. So, I don't know what that works out to be, but that's pretty good going, I reckon. Thank goodness for that. All right, we've got to wait for Dad to get back, so got the drone out.